Good morning, Sarah. <laughs> Good morning, Lillian. How are you? Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Yes. Hello, everybody else. Yes. Hello, everybody who is joining us for our final session. Can you believe it? It is July the 19th. We have officially now gone into our sixth session, and our episode number six is The Untangled You awakening your vulnerability. I'm excited about today's topic. Um, what do you Why, think? Sarah? Why are you so excited about this topic? <laughs> you know, because I think a long time ago, I used to be scared of this word vulnerability. I used to think that it meant I was a weak individual. I think mm -hmm. society, I think the way I grew up, um, has always taught me that being vulnerable, being open, being transparent was kind of exposing myself to the world, which meant that people would know the truth. Mm -hmm. And I was just taught that they shouldn't know the truth um, because they, you know, they don't want to see you as weak. They don't want to see you as, you know, whatever negative thing that we can come up with um, about vulnerability. Mm. But in all actuality, through life, through research, through the um, wonderful teachings of my favorite human in the world, Brene Brown, Brene Brown yeah, yeah um, vulnerability is the birthplace of connection. It's the birthplace of growth. It's the birthplace of empathy. Um, and it's the birthplace of relationship. And um, the sooner I learned that and the sooner I started to embrace that, the more my life started to change. What do you yeah. think about that, Lillian? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's almost like the, uh, the healing of the self-imposter syndrome. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's like we play this role to, to not be and, and vulnerability. The definition really of vulnerability is to be easily hurt or attacked. So, which is an interesting definition because to me, it's like, if I say this, or if I demonstrate this or show this, then this puts me as an easy target for somebody else to attack me or hurt me. Mm. However, that being said, if I don't do that, then I'm playing, uh, I'm playing a life, I'm not just playing a role. I am playing a life yeah. of lies. I'm not being true to myself. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I think the key point behind vulnerability for me is also trust. Um, if I can be vulnerable, which those of my clients who know me, I will step up and be vulnerable. I will share my, my pains, my stories, my, today feelings, et cetera, because it's okay to be me. Yeah. And that's where I start to trust myself. Yeah. If I don't trust myself, how can I ever be true to myself? Yeah. Pretty much impossible. Pretty yeah. much impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's like, do I, do I purposely open myself up to be targeted? Absolutely not. I mean, I don't, you know, I think that that's sometimes, when I think of that, I think of people who are, you know, we get targeted when we put ourselves in a place of protest, for example. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When we protest our rights, whether it be, you know, that we're gay or that we, that we are black life matters or all those things that we put ourselves in a place of vulnerability, that seems to be a place as a mass where we get targeted and where we get hurt or attacked. Yeah. Probably very similar to, you know, this, this six week series, right? Untangling societal norms. Ooh, um, what is this all about? And oh, what are they going to talk about? Like it just opens up the room for judgment from <sighs> other people. Yeah. And you know what though? I'm kind of like, I don't care. <laughs> I really just <laughs> don't care anymore because we're talking about the real life things that happen to us on a day-to-day -day basis. The stuff that everybody talks about in their home that they try to protect and sweep under the rug and, and all of those things. It is hard being a woman. It is hard being a gay woman. It is hard being 
um, a professional. It is hard to navigate this world as a woman. And if we want to just really make it seem like it's so easy um, and carefree and breezy, everybody's got a whole nother thing coming to them. And I just think I'm proud of us. Um, and you know what, Lillian, I think we're kind of badass, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I really do. I, I, yeah. I you know it's, it's language that's probably not typical, but I think we are badass in our yeah, own. What, what makes us badass? Like, like, let's go there. Cause we were talking about this earlier about how badass we both are. What makes us badass? W what makes us badass is that we're trying new things. We're exposing some truths. We're letting our guard down. We're sharing personal stories. We're inviting people in. We are inviting the critics, so to speak, that opportunity to slander, to um, talk bad about us, to um, judge us from afar if they want to. They can hide behind the message of a keyboard and, and you know share whatever it is that they want to say. And we're still here showing up every single Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, no matter what, no matter who comes, no matter who doesn't, no matter what anybody thinks. And we're exposing really important topics and really important things that affect you um, as a heterosexual white woman, yeah. things that affect me as a gay white woman. And we're also bringing in people of different races, ethnicities, uh, backgrounds, and experiences. And to me, that is badass because when we dissipate or move people away from us or we don't lean in with each other and we kind of build this wall and this is my territory as a woman and you can't get in there, ugh, yeah. I don't have any more time for that. No I time for that. No I time don't. for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, what's interesting when you look up the word badass, there's the word intimidating there, mm -hmm. you know? So, so it's either, you know, either we're a, a bitch in purple in people's eyes or we're intimidating, yeah. but it's that, I think, I think <laughs> just have this visual, you know, when you, when you look at somebody's ass, there's that, there's that, uh, hang on a second. We'll just remove somebody here. <laughs> there's that, um, there's that curvature you know, to, the, to, to somebody's butt, right? Yeah. And I think to myself, it's it's badass can be defined as something very, you know, intimidating and and and, and edgy. But I like to ref I like to add the curve to the edginess. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> there. I don't know why I don't know why that popped up in my mind, but yeah, it's it's that. How do we curve the edginess of us being the bitch or the badass or whatever? And I think it's about vulnerability. Yeah. I think the vulnerability takes away the hardness yeah. of how we may come across. Yeah. But more about it's okay to be me. Yeah. It's okay that, you know, I woke up and, you know, was tired and still had to, you know, show up for today. Or it's okay that um yesterday I, I just uh, I just read this thing on LinkedIn, this this nurse who wrote a story about her fight with her husband and how she walked out and went, slept in another room and slammed the door and, and all this. And I thought, wow, here she is helping other women. And she put that on, uh, posted it up on LinkedIn, a long story. But what we take away is not the fact that she <laughs> was vulnerable, but more the fact of what did she learn from that? How yeah. did she show up after? Yeah. And again, we can't be real unless we show the pain. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, specifically, I, I this reminds me of Zumba because I've now I've, I've done my second class by myself as a all girl. I know, right? <laughs> but I just, Bad as Zumba. <laughs> yeah, I just think back to like where I was over a year ago, tucked away in that back corner. How I inched up to the front. How I was so nervous to get on top of that stage. How I was so nervous to share the stage. And then nervous to get on the stage by myself. And now I'm teaching my own class mm -hmm. with women who are showing up every single week to get a great, you know, a great 60 minutes of, of exercise. And it's a beautiful thing. And it's fun. And I've learned so much. And I was so scared. And I was so nervous. And I was afraid of being judged. And I was afraid of all of these things. But when I walked away on Monday... And I got in my car and I was hot and I was sweaty and I had this glorious 
um, group photo of all these fabulous women who mm -hmm. decided to show up and, and, and get in the fit picture with me, I was like, that is amazing. It, that's amazing. That's yeah. badass. Yeah. And I couldn't yeah. have done it without exposing myself. I couldn't have done it without making mistakes. I couldn't have done it without trying, failing, trying again. Um, and I'm just, I'm proud of myself and I'm going to use that as like the next thing to wherever else I'm going. Like, I'm going to remember this moment to build on top of that, to keep unlocking whatever potential is inside me and sharing gifts with the world and helping others and building, building something great out of it, whatever that may be. I, and that's, yes. that's what I want. My legacy yes. is building something. Yeah. Great. yeah. And I think the badass in you goes, bring it on, baby. <laughs> bring it on. Bring it on. I have yeah. been through enough adversity, trials and tribulations from family trauma to loss, um, death, uh, yeah. bad relationships, uh, marriage to a man to now, you know, being in my very healthy relationship of 16 years with my beautiful wife. I've gone through total different jobs. I've gone through grad school. I've gone through undergrad. I've gone through um, addictions and, and other issues that have been painful and hard, but I, I am here. Yes. You've I come out of it. Yeah. 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 And I think that that's where we celebrate the most is when we've come out of those, those hardships, yeah. out of those hard places, you know, yeah. um, and be grateful for the places that still give us the struggles. Yeah. I think it's really important. Um, you know, and I, and I look at your sign again, progress, not perfection. Yeah. That, you that know? right there is the hardest thing for me. That's the yeah. hardest thing. Yeah. 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 It's the small wins. It's not just the big wins. It's not the fact that you're running your own show now, you know, your own, your own uh, Zumba class. It's, it's the small stuff. Um, yeah. What's that expression? Don't sweat the small stuff. I kind of think, yeah, yeah. go sweat, go sweat with the small stuff and, and be proud of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. where, where are you guys out there, you know, experiencing your place of fear of vulnerability, fear of, you know, well, not being that well-behaved woman as we, you know, as our tagline is, you know, yeah. well-behaved women rarely live their best lives. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Where are we being so well-behaved? Mm -hmm. You know, that we, that we, we shouldn't speak up a certain way or whatever. I, I just went, yes, I went through a drive through yesterday, get myself a cup of coffee. And I was like, and, and there were these two, I'm going to say non-white people. Okay. Speaking. Uh, they, they started laughing and speaking to each other. And I, and I stopped them right there. Societal norm would just tell me, just drive on, you know, who cares? But I stopped and I said to them, what did you just say to each other? And the girl looked at me and she goes, oh, it's okay. It's nothing. And I said, no, no. I said, you're speaking a different language that I don't understand. And that's not right. It, because it makes me feel uncomfortable. And she just made up something. And I said, please don't do that. Mm. I said, please be aware of what you're doing in front of other people because yeah. it makes other people. Now, I put myself in a very vulnerable place. You did. Okay. You did. Mm -hmm. As a you white straight woman out. here, I you called, called it out. out. Yeah. But I made them realize the impact it was having on me, not the fact that they were, you know, bad people, but more about what is it doing to me? What's yeah. the reaction? It's like when you go get your nails done, you know, and everybody's talking a different language in front of you and they're laughing and whatever. I, I find that very... Like we have to be aware of our impact. Yeah. I mean, I can certainly appreciate speaking in your native tongue in whatever language yeah. is most, um, you know, uh, best comfortable. for you. Yeah, comfortable for you. But when it seems as though they're trying to cover up something that, uh, you know, they're saying something about you. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. I've been in yeah. that situation numerous times. Yeah. Yeah. It is, yeah. it is totally uncomfortable. So I'm okay to, you know, maybe that's the badass in me. I'm okay to, to, to name that and say, this is the impact it's having on me Sure. right now. And it could yeah. be that they're not talking about me or, and, and it's not the fact that I'm, you know, talk about me. I mean, people do, everybody yeah. talks about you behind your back. I mean, you know, that's just life. But when you're so blatantly, you know, obvious in front of somebody, it's time to break the societal norm of saying, you know, I'm not going to be this well-behaved person that just, you know, sweeps it under the rug and, and, and doesn't say anything. This is, this is a point of, you know, you've got to gain your power through being vulnerable. Yeah. There, there's something there about standing up 
I, I want to say standing up for yourself, but I think it's it's more than standing up for yourself. It's standing up for other women. It's standing up for other cultures. It's standing up for other, you know, genders, whatever. Yeah. It's standing up and, and using your voice. Yeah. The voice of vulnerability yeah. Yeah. doesn't need to be shaky. On the contrary, it needs to be strong. Yeah. It needs to have reason behind it yeah not vulnerability like oh you know you're talking about me or whatever it's it's more that place of this is not right for anybody mm -mm. yeah for all of humankind all, all of, of humankind, humankind. Yeah. yes all of humankind yeah. which kind of makes me think too that when somebody is doing something right we also need to feel to be vulnerable enough to step up and tell somebody that mm, i know so, yeah, women are horrible at this. We don't compliment enough. your compliment enough of each other, right? Like we're not. I'm not saying Lillian, you're a badass as much as yeah. I probably should. Or you know, making people feel seen and heard and acknowledged and important. We don't do that often. We don't. Well, we don't do it amongst women. But my thought is even when a man steps up mm -hmm. to treat a woman properly. The way, you know, that that man is is stepping past his own societal norms. I think it's, you know, we need to raise, we need to raise the man. Yeah. That's yeah. doing it well. Yeah. Right? So that we can be untangling societal norms through the ones who are, you know, who have the most power in this world right now. Yeah. So that's kind of my calling forth of, of you know vulnerability is showing up yeah Absolutely. in this world i have spent way yeah mm, i have empire. spent way too much time trying to be well behaved trying to be the good girl i mean for 40 years of my life i was the good girl whatever you yeah. need me to be however you need me to act Whatever it is you need me to say, I will smile. I will nod. I will keep my mouth shut. I will do all of the things that you ask me, even though there's not enough time in the day to do all of the things that you ask me and I'll yeah. pile it on and I'll do it all. But my bucket of give a, you know what, yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. is yeah. emptying more and more as I continue to age and learn and realize that. I am not going to let people plow over me anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, living that good girl image is, oh, it's deteriorating. I mean, my yeah. face probably just says it all, but um, yeah. it typically does. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, you're, but, but look, at Sarah, when we see you, I mean, this is, you know, my, my first impression and long lasting impression about you. You've always got this beautiful smile. You're always that you've got this welcoming warmth to you. So people take advantage of that. They do. Right. Yeah. They do. They take advantage of that. And, and, and you've learned over the last few years yeah. to yeah. step up and say, yes. And not, yeah. not the, 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 the armored bitch who turns around and says, you know, I'm not taking that crap anymore from anybody, but you, you gently just name it with vulnerability and gentleness. You've got that curve. You've taken the edges off yeah, and, and just said, that's not who I am anymore. No, no, you're absolutely that's beautiful. Right. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Impa talks about take out the toxic masculinity. Yeah. Yes. Big time in thought, and not only the toxic mas masculinity in men, the toxic masculinity in women, because mm. we all have our masculine side. Yeah. yeah, 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 we do. We really do. For sure, for sure. You know, Intha, you're here, and you know some others are are probably in the background as well, and or people will watch li later. But what are you taking away from this six weeks that has shifted you? Really, would love to to, to hear that from our, our listeners are, you know, and whether it's, it's, you know, today, if you're here or listening to this, you know, another day, that's fine. What is it that you're taking away from the six week series or just in the, even in this moment that says, yeah, maybe I'm a little bit well behaved, or maybe I need to step out of this, or here's a societal norm I want to be more aware of, or 
whatever we've talked about. Yeah. You know, we, we want to awaken the vulnerability, right? Yeah. We want to start untangling you. Mm. Empowerment. Mm. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And I think empowerment comes from the fact that look at us, the two of us are sitting here. We've got a, you know, a group of women that are listening. Mm. We're not alone. Mm -mm. No. Finding your tribe. Go back to that episode. What was it? The episode three, you know, the value of a tribe. Yeah. Look at the power we can have collectively, just two women, three women, four women, whatever. It's amazing. A it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. While we wait for others to maybe collect their thoughts and kind of digest what it is that they're, um, you know, receiving from these six week series, I thought maybe this was a good time just to kind of walk through what we've talked about over the last sure. six weeks. What do you Let's think? Go for it. Yeah. So we, we knew that there was a roadmap to get here. Right. And so first, our first step in that roadmap was, you know, really taking that opportunity to discover who who we are as individuals, you know, taking that time to reflect on our values, taking our time to reflect on passion and, and what we aspire to be and really identifying the societal norms that we um, were embracing every single day. And so that's that was our first episode, really talking about how could we really discover who we who we are and where we need to be. Yeah, I want I wanted to elaborate on that because that's that's really the foundational work of where we need to start is yeah. who am I? What are my values? Like really, what are your values? A lot of people don't know that. Like and when we talk about values, I just want to reiterate it's that thing that no matter what, I will not allow anybody to to break that value of mine. Yeah. So I know, for example, my 102-year-old mother, one of her values is respect. You know, and you might say, oh, that's old school. I hear my daughter sometimes say, you know, it's old school. It's like the, the way they were brought up. And I go, it's more than that. It's a value that really she holds dear to her heart. She wasn't, it wasn't generational, might have been encouraged generationally, but it was really a strong value within her blood. Like it was just there. And it's something that she will, it just irks her if somebody does not respect something. Yeah. Yeah. So really get to know your values. Yeah. And if I could just continuously elaborate on values, because, you know, as an HR pr professional, values are so important in the workplace and in an organization. And if you don't, if you don't hire, if you don't fire, if you don't reward people off of those value systems, they're just words on a wall. Oh. And you really, you have to you have to truly, truly embody them. And if, and don't just have them be words that don't make sense. They have to be true to you. You know, I think for me, integrity is something I hold very, very near and dear to my heart. Doing the right thing, even when nobody is watching. watching. Yeah. 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 So I, I rarely cut corners. Um, you know, I, I will work late if I have to, just to do the right thing. I'm always wanting to do what's right by people. And that helps me, uh, you know, sleep really soundly at the end yeah. of the evening. Yeah. Very true. Very true. And yeah. that, you know, that brings to, I love what you're saying about the words on the wall. When you look at healthcare, one of the things I've been working with, with nurses has been, uh, moral injury. Mm -hmm. because they come in and you're asking me to care for somebody who's sick. And meanwhile, you're taking away all my resources to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So this is an example of moral injury. It is, it, it, it's injuring because for me to care, I need to care. And if you're taking that away from me, I can't stay here anymore. Mm -hmm. I cannot work in this environment. If you're taking that away from me, Yeah, that's moral injury. That's where the words don't match in healthcare these days. The words are not matching, and that's what our problem is. Oh, I, yeah. I am. You know, I don't know from that personally, but you know, my wife has uh, been taken advantage of in the healthcare system and unheard, and you know, told she's unreasonable for a lot of you know ways that she has felt, and you know, some male doctors will tend to. Um, minimize pain or minimize situations that happen to her or make yeah. it about something else. And so I can empathize with that from yeah. spouse perspective. And it's really, really hard to watch in the yeah. industry right now. Yeah. yeah. Especially when we're talking about pain because pain comes in different levels. Yeah. Some yeah. people have high pain tolerance. They can have a tooth removed with anesthesia. 
Yeah. For me, you got to give me anesthesia twice, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so that was episode one. Values. Yeah. Oh, we could continue on with our whole six week series. That's right. And then, we, and then we talked about really educating and empowering ourselves, you know, so taking a hard look at our own internal biases and beliefs and kind of challenging ourselves to maybe unlearn certain things, right? Yes. Not, yeah. you know, I grew up in a particular way. I have a certain amount of education. I see the world through one particular lens, but that lens is so much bigger. And we yes. need to sometimes expand that. We sometimes need to challenge our own thoughts and opinions because just because we think it's right, doesn't mean that it is. That's just right. Because we learned this type of language, or just because we learned this type of stereotype, or just because we learned about this particular race or culture from wherever that came from, it does not make it right. It does right. not make it yeah. right. Well, we have to check the rules we've made, right? The yeah. rules and beliefs that we've had. Absolutely. The beliefs that we've that we've started with, we need to challenge that, which goes to the to the work that I do with mental fitness is all about having the curious mind versus yeah. the opinionated judgment mind, right? Yeah. So being curious, being open-minded, those things have a lot more value and take us more to the place of vulnerability, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um so then we were talking about okay, so we've got where our values, we're educating ourselves, we're empowering ourselves to think in a different way. Then we were like, how do we foster empathy within ourselves? And how do we foster empathy in our relationships? That's stepping into someone else's shoes. Yeah. Maybe not being able to 100% identify with what they're experiencing or going through, but getting in touch with that feeling. You know, like we've all experienced anger. We've all experienced joy. We've all experienced sadness. Um it reminds me of that movie that's um, oh, um, coming out right now with all of the emotions and they've incorporated yes. uh, the Pixar Inside movie. Out. Inside yes, Out. Inside yeah. Out. Um, and how they're now introducing anxiety to kids mm -hmm. to help them understand that it's natural to feel those. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. It's natural to feel those things. And those are all human emotions. Yep. Every one of us feels you know, feel those things. And if we can connect that with what someone else might be going through, we might come from a better place of compassion and understanding, yep. you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. To relate. Yeah. To relate to that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then we were talking about lastly, last week, we were talking about leading and inspiring others and um, really kind of embracing our true selves. And I think that is the magic of this beautiful six week series, um, the, the beauty of our relationship, the, the beauty of how my relationships have transformed over the last couple of years with some people who really matter to me. Um, and also my relationship with self. That's mm. the most, that's, I'm most proud. And I think I'm most, mostly a badass because I finally got in touch with who Sarah is. Yes. I was no, I'm no longer living the persona of what someone told me I should be. I'm really starting to embrace who I am as a person, my gifts, my talents, my awkwardness, my weirdness, my quirks, my the good, bad, and ugly, right? Yeah, and I'm yeah. loving all of it, loving yeah. all of it. And, yeah. um, and, that is untangling a societal norm by saying I choose me over anybody else. Yeah. And I want to, I want to really elaborate on that because my experience both with myself and my clients has been that we are who we are in this moment. And we tend to go into the place of generalizing who am I overall mm. and and sometimes it's just right now, how am I showing up? How am I showing up for myself? How am I showing up in the way I imp impact the other person I'm, I'm conversing with right now? How am I, like, what's what's happening right now versus saying, putting a label, you know? Uh, yes, 
we are badass. Yes, we, you know, we're generalizing who we are overall, but it's really important to be with ourselves in the moment, what's happening right now. I don't want to be that badass person right now. Right now I'm feeling hurt. I'm feeling pain. I'm feeling whatever. And I may want to tap into the badass that I am to get out of it. Yeah. But I also don't want to deny when I'm in it. Mm. So, so it's a little bit of a, a game, you know, it, it's sort of like, do I want to stay here? Sometimes I need to stay here to be with what I'm feeling. Sure. And, you know, and going to the emotions, you know, we've talked about the iceberg, right? The iceberg is all the observable is the way we behave and the way we, um, and the results that we produce. Yeah. Okay. That's right. what's observable. That's what the world sees. Right. But everything that we're not revealing is our beliefs, our thoughts, and our emotions yeah. that are all under the surface of the iceberg. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we're working with internally. Yeah. And that's the part that we need to allow to show up vulnerably to say, yeah, you know, how many times have I been told, but what was it, a job that I was doing at one point where they added sales, they gave me a territory with sales. I was in pharmaceuticals years, years back. And I said to my boss, I said, I'm really not enjoying this. I don't like sales. And she said, well, observable results, right? Mm -hmm. You're really good at it, Lillian. Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah. yeah. And underneath the iceberg, I'm going, you know, I make a damn good lasagna. <laughs> I'm cooking. I'm not going to go in the kitchen and make lasagna every day. Right? So well, don't I love lasagna. <laughs> That's a strange parallel, right? But it, but oh, it's like it's saying, actually quite beautiful because I totally made that connection because I love any Italian food and anything that has <laughs> noodle and sauce in it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that was a perfect example. But you know what? I don't want to spend my days in the kitchen making lasagna. Like, yeah. I don't. That's not where I want to be. So the results and behaviors again that mask. You know, the the well-behaved woman on the outside, I'm selling things. I'm, you know, I'm a great seller. I'm doing all that stuff really wonderfully on the observable side. But what's the vulnerable place underneath, you know, that I'm, am I conforming up here to what's expected of me on the societal norms? Yeah. Or do I want to be with, with who's showing up underneath? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm done. Yeah. I want to live my best life. Yeah. And there's a lot to live under that iceberg. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Oh. Oh, okay. Dear. So what can we do to kind of wrap up this glorious six week series? And what I guess maybe I'll ask you, what has been your biggest aha? Mm. What has been your biggest takeaway? What's been your what have you learned over these last six weeks, would you say? Yeah, that's a great question. I love when they, we, we get unexpected questions. This is not part I'm of our so script. Right? That's why my friends call me the interrogator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's why I love you as a, as a client, Sarah, is because, you know, you ch you challenge the coach. So, so that's wonderful. Um, yeah. You know, I've, I've been aware. I've, you know, I've, I step into vulnerability big time. I'm, um, I think I break the societal norms. I think where I've I've grown in the last six weeks has been I'm so much more aware that there's more than and not that I didn't know this there's more than my world okay and I and I mean I've known this all my life however I'm, I want to I want to break through this in the sense that I want to learn how I can serve help um, other women untangle their societal norms and where they're being well behaved. And I, like I said, I do this with my clients. So I know this, but there are, there are things that I, as a straight white woman still need to learn. Mm. Although I've learned a lot, I've been curious. I still have a lot to learn. And I, and so my big re request in the world is to say, teach me, help me see the things I'm not seeing. You know, as a woman, reach out and, and tell me, this is what I experience as a black woman, as an Indian woman in this world. And, and, you know, I mean, I have some, the godparents of my children are Jamaican, okay? And just a few years ago, we had a conversation about what they experienced. And I went, really? When you get stopped by the cops, this happens to you? 
And, and, and I was like, yeah, I know that happens, but I couldn't see it happening to these people, to, to, to my friends, because I, I wasn't visualizing them as part of that group. I guess I wasn't, you know, I, I was normalizing them. Mm -hmm. And I think that I need to be more aware and realize what's happening right in front of my nose. Yeah. So that's where I've grown, I think, I, is my awareness has expanded. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. What about you, Sarah? What yeah. What have you take it away uh, here. I think for me, I've, I've become even more vulnerable than I was six weeks ago. Um, you know, you know me well enough to know that you have been encouraging me to make two minute videos about just <laughs> random things that I could just speak about. And for some reason, that thought of seeing me on camera or, you know, the way that my words were going to come out of my mouth or how much I blinked or what my hair looked like or what outfit I, I was just so in my head and so in the stuff that doesn't matter that I would put off the videos. I would yeah. put them off, right? I but just, do you remember, do you remember in one of our coaching sessions, I said, okay, Here's the subject. You've got two minutes to put some key points down, and then I want you to record. And go. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was like, I do. I do. I want it to come from your heart. I don't want it to come from your, you know, the observable results at the top of the, the iceberg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and so here we are just having a, a normal conversation um, now. And here I am six weeks later, more confident, um, more open, more um caring less about the look of it all, caring less about the sound of it all, and just speaking from a place of truth and speaking from a place of, dare I say, authenticity. Yeah. I mean, this, this is me. This is Sarah in her office, in her space where she gets creative, where she posts things on the wall to brighten up her day, to remind her that, you know, there's more of a world out there that, you know, I've got this little picture of me when I was about five or six years old kind of hanging out there. And it's this reminder to myself that that little girl, that sweet, innocent, young little girl um, just needs to be loved, just yeah. needs to be loved. And yeah. that through the course of life with parents, maybe not, you know, being the best that they could have been, but trying their damnedest to be the best they could. Or just the things that I went through and experienced in life that damaged that little girl. And I have to remind myself that she needs a hug. She needs love. She needs support. She needs guidance. And um, and I'm okay with saying that now. And I don't think mm. I was ever okay with saying that before. Mm. And I'm sure mm. and I imagine that there are a lot of women out there who feel that same exact way. Mm. And even if it's just the, you know, the, the people we have here or... Um, you know, others who have listened before, I want everybody out there, man, woman, whatever, to know that you are going to be okay. We can do this together. And I've been there before and I will happily walk alongside you shoulder to shoulder, arm to arm, and I will help you get there too. And so that's what I've learned. That's what mm. I've learned. About these six mm. weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. You have been vulnerable through these six week series. You know, the, it's like, feel it and do it anyway. You, you, you've shown up. I can't think of a better co-host to be doing this with. Like, you're just, yeah, you're the world to me, Sarah. You really are. Um, and, and it's so much easier doing things together. Yeah. Which takes me to the place of, you know, I just want to make a small announcement here. Yeah. I am, you know, I am, um, I will be launching very shortly. So stay, stay tuned. Uh, a couple of series. One is the Unstoppable Women. And another one is the Unstoppable Nurses. Mm, yeah, and sure. my goal in that is to be interviewing um, different people who are, who are unstoppable. And there are two categories of unstoppable. There's the unstoppable who are still struggling. And they're the unstoppable who have a story to tell who say, not that I've arrived because we've never arrived. You know, if, if we've arrived, it's time to, to leave this planet, I think. 
So, but, but what are the big lessons they've learned and they've arrived? Like I think of the, you know, uh, yesterday I was thinking, I'd love to interview Jennifer Hudson. Mm. You know, there's somebody who's, yeah. you know, who's unstoppable and through, you know, so much, the Michelle Obamas of the world, you know, the unstoppable women who have, Ooh. who have arrived in a certain place but are still unstoppable, still going for what, whatever's next. If I can add a third to that, Viola Please. Davis. I am reading her book. Um, well, I'm listening to her book. Uh, yeah. It's called Finding Me. That woman, Lord have mercy, mm. Viola Davis. Oh my gosh, you've got to, that her story, her trials, her tribulations, her path and her journey to finding who she is and owning her power is, oh, you will laugh, you will cry. Mm. It's amazing. So please add that to your repertoire. And Yeah, my rep and Viola book. Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Serena Sorry, Williams. I didn't mean Serena Williams, right? Oh. Another one who who changed things in in in, yeah. in sports. So these are the women that I that I want us to be. I, I want to be interviewing because to me, what makes you an unstoppable woman is not the easiness. It's the challenges, like all those challenges you talked about. You know, when you were a child, Sarah. You know. The parents who tried their best, but um, and we got Jane Elliott. I have to look up Jane Elliott as well. Um, you know, the it's all those struggles that make us get back up, and that make us stronger every time. It's almost like doing push-ups, right? Every time you go down, you come back up, and you and you build your muscles, right? Right. Yeah. That I think is what you know. When the more pain somebody's gone through, unfortunately, it's almost like we you know we make ourselves even more unstoppable. Yeah. And I hear that often with women who say, you know, I can't go out there and talk about my story. Like I'm, people's other people's stories have been so amazing. Like my story is nothing. Well, your story is like the neighbor's story next door. It's, it's everybody has a story yeah. and it's not going to relate to everyone. It's going to relate to somebody who's going through that same kind of story in their life right. who can relate so our stories are important we need to be telling them yeah. so yeah stay tuned for unstoppable women and unstoppable nurses and then yeah. i'll be sharing some you know some other stuff some wisdom of coaching and stuff like that okay. um yeah but that's that's next okay that's next. well i'm i can't wait to support you um and to you know lean in and and listen to those conversations so thank you and then as we kind of wind down with just a couple of minutes here, we have an important announcement to make and a drum yes. roll, right? Of the person. <laughs> um, and do you want to share the person who won, um, Lillian? Well, why don't you announce it and then I'll and then I'll I'll speak directly to her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me just make sure I pull her up here real quick. <clears throat> if you want to just chit chat while I'm. Yeah. Well, so here's the, here's the opportunity. This person has, um, has won an opportunity to have me come out and speak at their, um, at their organization to, um, it may be just women. I'm not sure what her, what she would like, or it may be, you know, people, um, both women and men, which is fine. Um, not a problem. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what topic she would like us to, you know, me to come out and talk about. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me just pull this. Well, up. I have her name. If you don't have it there, I have no, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got yeah. it. I just wanted um, you to be part of the, <laughs> yes, I, I know. I just want to make sure that I'm doing, giving it justice it right. and everything is good. Um, <clears throat> sorry, this is taking longer than I thought. Okay. And so um, she's been on our show a couple of times now. I've seen her name walk through and it is Athea, right? Congratulations, Athea. You get this amazing opportunity to have Lillian chat of, and bring all of her expertise to your group. Um, a value of around $5,000, which is just yeah. wonderful. So congratulations. Yeah. We are so, so happy for you. So Althea, you can reach out to me and we will uh, organize when, how, what, et cetera. We'll talk about details and uh, congratulations on that. I am uh, thrilled uh, to be able to do, to be there for you. And um, 
yeah, stay tuned. We may, who knows, Sarah may come back in one way or another. We might, you know, challenge her into something else. Oh, this is not the last time that I will ever be out. Oh, she's there. She got it. Yay. She's quiet. She's a quiet one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She was sitting there quietly. So yeah. awesome. Athea, congratulations, my friends. And we are so happy for you. Yes. 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 But this is not the last time you will ever see Sarah Zagilla. That is for sure. Yes. I've got more to share, more to do, more to come. It, yeah. The party is just getting started with me. It's just beginning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so watch out, world. She might watch take us out. at a Zumba class online. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I could. All right. Well, to all of my female warriors out there, um, to all of the warriors out there, thank you so much for supporting, for listening, for taking in the stories, for being here. Um, for owning your own power, for learning and taking time for yourself. Lillian, thank you so much for being the best coach, the best guide, um, my friend, my person who has always just kind of helped me be a better human being. I owe so mm. much to you and I'm forever mm. indebted and I love our friendship. I love our relationship. And so yes. thank you for doing this with me yeah. to my wife who has supported me and encouraged me, um, challenged me. Uh, thank you, Heather. I adore and love you. And to my family and friends, thank you for all the support. This has been so much fun. And I hope everybody has a great rest of their July and a great rest of your summer. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And, you know, ditto. My yeah. person. I love the my person. It reminds me of the Grey's Anatomy, you know, and uh, <laughs> that is so true. Um, yes. Love you all. Thank you so much for paying attention and being here. Uh, thank you for doing this for yourself. That's uh, probably the most important thing. So I want you all to take your right hand, put it on the back and give yourself a nice big pat on the shoulder because you deserve it. You do. <laughs> all right. Have Take a great, care, great day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.